1992, there was an arcade craze sweeping the United States, and that was Mortal Kombat. Here we are looking at the 1993 release for the Sega Genesis, which I felt at the time was the best home port of the game. It also made it to the Super Nintendo, uh, but I didn't feel it was that good. Let's pop it in and give it a try. Now, to give you a little backstory about Mortal Kombat, it was so popular in arcades that uh, in 1992, in 1993, I was in college, and I would still go to like a 7 Eleven uh, or some type of store, convenience store like that, that actually had Mortal Kombat machine, uh, a machine in it. And there was plenty of them. Almost every convenience store had a Mortal Kombat machine in it. And I would drive there with other college buddies, and we would actually play this game uh, for hours on end. It was just a, a really good time. It was a blast to beat the shit out of your friend and you know, kill him with the fatality. It was all wonderful features. And before Mortal Kombat came out, it was uh, Street Fighter 2 was the reigning supreme champion of home and arcade video game fighting games. It was, uh, everybody played both of them. Everybody played Street Fighter 2 in the arcade and at home. And uh, then Mortal Kombat came onto the scene. And it was a Street Fighter type game, but it had all kinds of blood, guts, and gore. And uh, it was just really appealing at the time because the graphics were like top notch. They look a bit dated today. Uh, not terrible, but uh, certainly not stellar. But what Mortal Kombat had, which also Street Fighter 1 and 2 both had, were uh, unique characters that had unique moves. And a, uh, that's the difference between a good and a bad fighting game. A bad fighting game has generic moves, all the characters have almost all the same moves. In Mortal Kombat, uh, like Street Fighter, each character has some pretty unique moves, and there's pretty unique ways to do the moves. So it took a bit of uh, trial and error to find your favorite character and to learn his moves. In the arcade, I was a big fan of Kano. Not so much on the home console, though, because you really needed the joystick to do a lot of Kano moves. But as we can see, the Sega Genesis version of Mortal Kombat is uh, pretty darn close to the arcade. It's, uh, they covered the port very well. They did take the blood and gore out of it, uh, initially, but it's actually still in there. You have to put a secret code in uh, in order to unlock the uh, fatalities and the blood. Now, the Genesis port, as good as it was, and it is very, very good, um, it doesn't have everything the arcade has. A lot of the uh, voiceovers are out. It does have the fight voiceover, uh, but a lot of the other voiceovers, and, and a few others, I think Scorpion says, uh, get over here still. But a lot of the other, um, all, all, almost all the other voiceovers are, are taken out. Uh, I believe the Finish Him uh, voiceover's in there. Uh, yeah, that's definitely in there. But um, when you win, in the arcade it would say like, oh, Kato wins, or whatever, whoever wins. Uh, all that kind of stuff is left out, and I assume that's for, uh, you know, lack of uh, memory and space on the actual Genesis cartridge, and probably the processing power of the Genesis. The other obvious difference you'll see uh, with the Genesis version versus the arcade version of Mortal Kombat uh, is the uh, actual player control. In the arcade, you had this nice joystick and a, an array of buttons, high and low kick, high and low punch, and a block button right in the middle. Uh, since the Genesis is lacking in that many controls and buttons, uh, you use the D-pad to control your character like the joystick. Uh, and it works okay. It doesn't work great. The, um, some of the conversions of the character moves uh, didn't translate so well on the D-pad. And in the Genesis version, uh, I'm using a three-button Genesis controller. I'm not sure if they changed it for the six button controller, but you have high and low kick, uh, just a high punch, and you use the start button to block, which was a little uh, awkward at first, but not too bad once you get used to it. Overall, it's I think it's the best port of the game on the older consoles. Definitely pick it up if you get a chance. I'm Dami from Classic Games Revisited. Get over here.
Until next time. <laughs>